Hello and welcome to MBKM Models, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and follow for more aircraft documentaries and model build videos. The Junkers Ju-88 is a German World War II Luftwaffe twin-engined multi-role combat aircraft. Junkers Aircraft and Motor Works JFM designed the plane in the mid-1930s as a so-called Chanel bomber fast bomber that would be too fast for fighters of its era to intercept. It suffered from technical problems during its development and early operational periods but became one of the most versatile combat aircraft of the war. Like a number of other Luftwaffe bombers, it served as a bomber, dive bomber, night fighter, torpedo bomber, reconnaissance aircraft, heavy fighter and at the end of the war, as a flying bomb. Despite a protracted development, it became one of the Luftwaffe's most important aircraft. The assembly line ran constantly from 1936 to 1945 and more than 15,000 Ju-88s were built in dozens of variants, more than any other twin-engine German aircraft of the period. Throughout production the basic structure of the aircraft remained unchanged. The invasion of Poland. Only 12 Ju 88 saw action during the invasion of Poland. The unit Air Pro Bungs Commando 88 Ecto 88 was responsible for testing new bomber designs and their crews under hostile conditions. They selected 12 aircraft and their crews and attached them to one Kampfschiss Wader 25. As a result of its small operational numbers, the type made no impact. The Battle of Norway. The Luftwaffe committed two Kampfschiss Schwader 30 to the campaign under 10 Flieger Corps for Operation Veseroabung. The unit was equipped with Ju 88s and engaged Allied shipping as its main target. On 9 April 1940, Ju 88s of KG 30 dive bombed, in cooperation with high level bombing Heinkel He 111s of KG 26 and helped damage the battleship HMSR Rodney and sink the destroyer HMSR Gurkha. However, the unit lost four Ju-88s in the action, the highest single loss of the aircraft in combat throughout the campaign. The Battle of France The Luftwaffe's order of battle for the French campaign reveals all but one of the Luftwaffe's Flieger Corps. One Flieger Corps contained Ju-88s in the combat role, the mixed bomber units including the Ju-88s, of Camp Chiswader 51 under the command of Luftflot 3 helped claim between 233 and 248 Allied aircraft on the ground between the 10th and 13th of May 1940. The Ju-88 was particularly effective at dive bombing. Between the 13th of and 24th of May, 1 and 2 KG-54 flew 174 attacks against rail systems, paralyzing French logistics and mobility. On 17 June 1940, Junkers Ju-88s mainly from Camp Jishweda 30 destroyed a 10,000-ton ship, the 16,243-a-ton ocean liner RMS Alencastria, off St. Naz Air killing some 5,800 Allied personnel. Some 133 Ju-88s were pressed into the Blitzkrieg, but very high combat losses and accidents forced a quick withdrawal from action to retrain crews to fly this very high-performance aircraft. Some crews were reported to be more scared of the Ju-88 than the enemy, and requested a transfer to an HE-111 unit. By this time, Major performance deficiencies in the A1 led to an all-out effort in a major design rework. The outcome was a longer, 20.08 a meter 65.9 a feet twing span, from extended rounded wing tips that had already been standardized on the A4 version, that was deemed needed for all A1s thus the A5 was born. Surviving A1s were modified as quickly as possible, with new wings to the A5. Battle of Britain by August 1940, A1s and A5s were reaching operational units just as the battle was intensifying. The Battle of Britain proved very costly. Its higher speeds did not prevent Ju-88 losses from exceeding those of its Stornia Do-17 and Heinkel HE-111 stablemates despite being deployed in smaller numbers than either. 
JU88 losses over Britain in 1940 totaled 303 aircraft between July and October 1940, DO17 and HE111 losses for the same period were 132 and 252 machines destroyed respectively. Of all the losses suffered by the JU88 at that time, however, a number were due to the tricky behavior of the plane, especially when compared with the proven HE-111, and to the crew's lack of experience on the type many having converted to the JU-88 only shortly before, of the 39 losses recorded for July 1940, for example, only 20 were due to enemy action, the others being written off in training accidents, crashes, or malfunctions over mainland Europe. A series of field modifications were made to make the JU-88 less vulnerable, including the replacement of the single MG-15 rear machine gun by a twin-barreled MG-81Z machine gun and the fitting of additional cockpit armor. One incident involved ground fighting between the crew of an A-1 and soldiers from the London Irish Rifles during the Battle of Graveney Marsh on 27 September 1940. It was the last action between British and foreign military forces on British mainland soil. The flagship JU-88A4 went into service during the closing days of the Battle of Britain. Although slower than the A-1, it solved nearly all of the troubles of the A-1. The A-4 actually saw additional improvements including more powerful engines but, unlike other aircraft in the Luftwaffe, did not see a model code change. The JU-88C series also benefited from the A-4 changes, the Balkans and Greece. The JU-88s were used by 8 Flieger Corps during the German invasion of Yugoslavia in April 1941. JU-88s were also used during the German invasion of Greece Operation Marita in April 1941 and during the German invasion of Crete in May 1941. Following the Italian surrender in 1943 JU-88s were also used during the German invasion of the Italian Hell Dodecani Silence, which took place between September and November 1943. Eastern Front By the summer of 1941, most of the units equipped with the Dornier DO-17 were upgrading to the JU-88s, with a few exceptions. Most of the German bomber units were now flying the HE-111 and JU-88. The JU-88 was to prove a very capable and valuable asset to the Luftwaffe in the east. The JU-88 units met with instant success, attacking enemy airfields and positions at low level and causing enormous losses for little damage in return. Three Kampfschwader 3 attacked Pinsk airfield in the morning of the 22nd of June 1941. It caught and claimed destroyed 60 Soviet bombers on the ground. The 39 SBAP regiment of the 10 Division SAD actually lost 43 2 Polev SBU and 5 Petliakov PE 2s. JU-88s from Camp Jishweda 51 destroyed over 100 aircraft after dispatching 80 JU-88s to hit airfields. In general the Soviet aircraft were not dispersed and the Luftwaffe found them easy targets. A report from the Soviet 23rd Tank Division of the 12th Armored Corps described a low-level attack by JU-88s on the 22nd of June, resulting in the loss of 40 tanks. However, the JU-88s were to suffer steady attritional losses. At 0415 on the 22nd of June 1941, 3 KG-51 attacked the airfield at Kurovitsa, despite destroying 34 Polycarpov 1153s. The JU-88s were intercepted by 66 SHAP 1153s. Six JU-88s were shot down before the German fighter escort dealt with the threat. By the end of the first day of the campaign, JU-88 losses amounted to 23 destroyed, due to the lack of sufficient numbers of JU-87 Stukas, the JU-88 was employed in the direct ground support role, this resulted in severe losses from ground fire, Kampfschwader Schwader 1. Kampfschwader 76 and Kampfschwader 77 reported the loss of 18 JU-88s over enemy territory on the 23rd of June. KG-76 and KG-77 reported the loss of a further 4 JU-88s. 
of which 12 were 100% destroyed. In the north, the VVS Northwestern Front lost 465 aircraft on the ground, 148 of them bombers to the Ju 88s of KG 1. A further 33 were damaged. Out of a total of 1,720 aircraft deployed by the VVS Northern Front on the 22nd of June, it lost 890 and a further 187 suffered battle damage in eight days. The Ju 88s units helped virtually destroy Soviet air power in the northern sector. Again, the Ju 88 demonstrated its dive bombing capability, along with HE 111s from KG 55. Ju 88s from KG 51 and 54 destroyed some 220 trucks and 40 tanks on the 1st of July, which helped repulse the Soviet Southwestern Front's offensive. The Ju 88s destroyed most trail links during interdiction missions in the area, allowing Panzer Group 1 to maintain the pace of its advance. Ju 88 units operating over the Baltic states during the battle for Estonia inflicted severe losses on Soviet shipping, with the same dive bombing tactics used over Norway, France, and Britain. KGR 806 sank the Soviet destroyer Karl Marx on the 8th of August 1941 in Loxa Bay, Dallin. On the 28th of August, the Ju 88s had more success when KG 77 and KGR 806 sank the 2026 A ton steam of Ironia, the 2317 ton Lucerne the 1,423 ton Atis Kronvelds and the icebreaker Kryzynis Valdemars 2,258 tons. The rest of the Soviet fleet were forced to change course, this took them through a heavily mined area. As a result 21 Soviet warships including 5 destroyers, struck mines and sank. On 29 August, the Ju 88s accounted for the transport ships Vitarea Piatilitka 3,974 A tons, Kalpax 2,198 tons, and Leningrad Soviet 1,278 tons sunk. In addition, the ships Ivan Papanin, Saul, Kazakhstan, and the Serp 1 Molot were damaged. Some 5,000 Soviet soldiers were lost. The Mediterranean Ju 88s first arrived in Sicily in 1940, from which they attacked Allied shipping in the Mediterranean and took part in the bombing of Malta during the Siege of Malta, North Africa. Ju 88s were used in the North African campaign, where they flew operations in support of the Axis forces in North Africa. The Italian campaign. On the 2nd of December 1943, 105 Ju 88A 4s, armed with bombs and moto bomb circling torpedoes, attacked the Allied held port of Bari, Italy. The attacking force achieved complete surprise and sunk over 20 Allied ships in the overcrowded harbor, including the U.S. Liberty ship John Harvey, which was carrying mustard gas. About 1,000 people were killed and another 1,000 wounded. Many fatalities and injuries were as a result of the release of mustard gas. The attacking force lost one aircraft. The Allies had not assigned any fighters to guard Bari as they thought the Luftwaffe incapable of striking in this strength at this stage of the war. The port was completely closed for three weeks from the damage of the raid and only resumed full operation in February 1944, the Finnish Air Force. In April 1943, as Finland was fighting its continuation war against the USSR, the Finnish Air Force bought 24 Ju-88s from Germany. The aircraft were used to equip No. 44 Squadron, which had previously operated Bristol Blenheims, but these were instead transferred to No. 42 Squadron. Due to the complexity of the Ju-88, the FAF spent most of 1943 training crews on the aircraft, and conducted only a handful of bombing missions. The most notable was a raid on the Leito Partisan village on 20 August 1943 in which the whole squadron participated, and a raid on the Levensari airfield leaving 788 damaged from forced landing in inclement weather. In the summer of 1943, the Finns noted stress damage on the wings. This had occurred when the aircraft were used in dive bombing. Restrictions followed, 
the dive brakes were removed and it was only allowed to dive at a 45 degree angle compared to 60 to 80 degrees previously. In this way, they tried to spare the aircraft from unnecessary wear. One of the more remarkable missions was a bombing raid on the 9th of March 1944 against Soviet long-range aviation bases near Leningrad, when the Finnish aircraft, including Ju-88s, followed Soviet bombers returning from a night raid on Tallinn, catching the Soviets unprepared and destroying many Soviet bombers and their fuel reserves, and a raid against the Aerosan base at Petsnijoki on the 22nd of March 1944. The whole bomber regiment took part in the defense against the Soviets during the 4th Strategic Offensive. All aircraft flew several missions per day, day and night. When the weather permitted, No. 44 Squadron was subordinated to Lento Rimasako during the Lapland War now against Germany, and the Ju-88s were used both for reconnaissance and bombing. The targets were mostly vehicle columns, reconnaissance flights were also made over northern Norway. The last war mission was flown on 4 April 1945, after the wars. Finland was prohibited from using bomber aircraft with internal bomb stores. Consequently, the Finnish Ju-88s were used for training until 1948. The aircraft were then scrapped over the following years. No Finnish Ju-88s have survived, but an engine is on display at the Central Finland Aviation Museum and the frame structure of a German Ju-88 cockpit hood is preserved at the Finnish Aviation Museum in Vanta. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening and until next time.